Well, hello everybody. It's, uh, I hate to rush in and rush out, but uh, uh, unfortunately today is uh, like so many days uh, on the Hill, a very, very busy legislative day. Uh, my co-chair of the Robotics Caucus, uh, Mike Doyle, the gentleman from uh, Pennsylvania, and Carnegie Mellon uh, in his district will be here, uh, I think, shortly. Uh, but I want to welcome everyone. I want to thank you for attending today's first Congressional Robotic Caucus briefing of this 111th Congress. The goal of the Robotics Caucus is to hold at least three educational briefings like this one today across a number of issues. Today's briefing will focus on the robotics roadmap that will unveil the results of a National Science Foundation study. We have a very distinguished panel today that will provide insight on this important study. Future Robotics Caucus's briefings this year, as I say, will focus on medicine and surgery. Uh, in regards to the Department of Defense, of course, I had the, the distinct pleasure in my first six years uh, here in the House as a member of the House Armed Services Committee. And of course, robotics are used extensively uh, now on the battlefield. Again, I'm honored to be serving as a co-chair of the caucus, and like you, I look forward to hearing more about the robotics roadmap that will be outlined today. Thank you all very much. Great to be with you. Thank you very much, Congressman Beaver. I'm Jared Cohen, the president of Carnegie Mellon University, and I have the distinct pleasure of serving as the MC, I guess, for the rest of this um, event. Mike Doyle is a congressman from my district, but I, I want to convey our great thanks to him and the Congressman Dingley for their co-leadership of the National Robotics Caucus. Uh, join me in thanking Mike Doyle for his wonderful uh, As many of you in the room know, Zach Womp and I organized this caucus about a year ago uh, to try to educate interested members and staff how uh, industrial robot technology is helping America and, and, and to talk about what we uh, need to do to become stronger global competitors. Our caucus now has 25 members from all over the country. Uh, all of these members recognize the growing role that robotics technology is playing in our nation's economy and how much potential that this technology holds for creating jobs, reducing costs and increasing our competitiveness. Over the past year, 140 individuals from companies, laboratories, universities, uh, from across the country have joined forces to produce a report that identifies the future impact of robotics technology on the economic, social, and security needs of the nation, outlines various scientific and technological challenges, and documents a technological roadmap to address those challenges. Uh, I'm excited to see this roadmap completed. I believe that now is the time for our country to make a commitment to advancing robotech industry so that we can remain a leader in the field. I'm hopeful that the new roadmap will provide uh, a big part of helping us to move forward uh, on this national commitment because it's one of the few technologies capable in the near term of building new companies and creating new jobs while also addressing the important uh, issues in manufacturing, healthcare, defense, transportation, and, and a host of other sectors. So uh, I wish you well today. I apologize that I'm going to run back upstairs. Thanks, Gary. Take care. Thank you. Um, I think that the, the main message you're going to be hearing uh, from uh, my colleagues as they present the key findings in the uh, robotic roadmap report is that uh, robotics is ready. Because we have already great strength in this country in, in robotics, but there's much more we can do, and our leadership is threatened. Uh, there are uh, both research challenges and policy challenges. If you're hearing about the research challenges, I want to underscore on the policy side, other countries have really stepped up and have invested massively in research in this area. We're talking about uh, Korea, Japan, uh, Europe, and the EU have made very large uh, commitments to getting stronger in, in this field. Uh, this is a challenge we have to respond to. And so robotics roadmap, I think, uh, positions us to do that in a very effective way. To present the key findings in detail, I'm really pleased to introduce to you Dr. Henry Christensen, who 
Congressman Gingrey mentioned before, a professor of Georgia Tech, he's provided outstanding leadership to this effort. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Hendrick Christensen. Thank you, Gary, for the very kind introduction. Uh, I, um, I'm pleased to be here uh, to talk to you about the, the main findings of the robotics roadmap. Uh, here in the Tide Flat at Kaito Show, we've been uh, about 10 academics that's been sort of trying to bring all of this together. But as mentioned earlier, we had about 140 people involved in this, 60 40 from, so 40% from industry and 60% from academia. So there's been sort of a good overlap there. Uh, and the reason why we, we're doing this is that we consider that robotics is a game changer. Just like the internet has sort of changed how we think about things over the last 15 years, robotics is going to do that for the next decade. So this is why we think it's very important to do this. And we came together, a, a large number from the community, to define a roadmap to say, how can commercial robotics be used in the US? And in particular, how can we use some robots to empower the American workforce so that we can grow the economy? 